Welcome to EM Rapid. Now we will be discussing about acute diarrheal disease. So diarrhea means it is loose stools. That means at least three loose stools in 24 hours is known as diarrhea. And it is one of the second leading cause of death in children. And the most common cause is rotavirus. But uh, since, uh, since the rotavac vaccine is available now, the incidence has reduced. And some other terms are invasive diarrhea and persistent diarrhea. So what is invasive diarrhea? Invasive diarrhea means gross blood in stools, uh, but it will last less than 14 days duration only. And it might be accompanied with fever. Uh, it is because of exudative inflammation of the distal small intestine and the colonic mucosa in response to bacterial invasion. And what is persistent diarrhea? Persistent diarrhea means loose stools. Uh, it can be either mixed with blood or just loose tools, which is lasting more than 14 days. So what all are the risk factors uh, for the children to get this diarrheal disease? It can be because of poor sanitization, sanitation or poor personal hygiene, unsafe food practices and drinking water, low rate of breastfeeding, lack of immunization and uh, immunocompromised children. And what are the causes of diarrhea? So causes can either be infective or because of some dietary uh, disturbances or some anatomical problems for the child. So infection itself can be divided into viral, bacterial and parasitic. So uh, viral causes are most common cause as we told it is rotavirus. Then other causes are uh, norovirus. Then adenovirus, saprovirus, astrovirus, like that. And bacterial infection can be secondary to E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Arsenia, Cholera, Clostridium difficile infection, like that. And some parasitic infections like Giardia lamblia, Entremoeba histolytica, Cryptosporidium, all these can cause um, diarrhea. And some dietary disturbances can also cause diarrhea. It can be a food allergy or it can be because of overfeeding or um, some uh, children will be having starvation stools also. Then it can be because of some anatomical abnormalities like Hirschsprung's disease, uh, because of some um, surgical problems like intussusception, partial obstruction, appendicitis, blind loop syndrome, short bowel syndrome like that. Or it can be... Uh, inflammatory bowel disease or some malabsorption like uh, lactose intolerance, cystic fibrosis, uh, wheat intolerance that is celiac disease uh, like that or it can be because of some secretory neoplasms also and some systemic diseases like immune deficiency or hyperthyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, congenital adrenal hyperplasia these things can also cause non-infective diarrheas. And some miscellaneous causes are antibiotic induced diarrhea. Child might be taking some amoxicillin or something for LRTA or upper respiratory infection and child might present with diarrhea. Or uh, irritable colon syndrome and uh, neonatal drug withdrawal syndromes, uh, hemolytic uremic syndromes or it can be because of some toxins. So um, clinical features. Clinical features is uh, diarrhea in viral gastroenteritis usually uh, presents uh, with just diarrhea as such. And sometimes children might uh, have some abdominal pain, uh, abdominal crampiness will be there. But there will not be any peritoneal signs as such as if we are seeing for a surgical abdomen. Uh, there can be frequent mucus containing stools but the volume of stools will be very much low. And when we are examining the children, uh, there will be a history uh, uh, because, because of the diarrhea, because of the irritability, child might not be feeding well. And because of the loss of fluid and electrolytes, child will be dehydrated. So, uh, in these children, first we should assess the PAT triangle. So, in the ER, first we will be assessing the PAT triangle. We will be looking the appearance of the child, work of breathing and the circulatory part. So, in the appearance, we will be looking the tone, interact, consolability, look and speech and depending on the severity of dehydration, the child's tone, interact, everything will be reduced. And work of breathing, if the patient is so much dehydrated, the child will be having tachypnea. And in the circulation, the, the, there will be mottling or, uh, mottling or pallor for the child. So, uh, look uh, and in the, there will be prolonged CRT. So, look for the CRT, look for the skin turgor, 
any abnormal respiratory pattern is there or not and we will be also examining the mucous membrane and the eyes uh, to look for signs of dehydration so where all will we look for the signs of dehydration so uh, it can be um, the uh, usually we will be looking at the eyes the oral mucosa and the tears so um, if the child is normal uh, doesn't look very much dry or the eyes or because everything is normal and then it can be because of only mild dehydration or uh, no dehydration and if the child is thirsty restless irritable and all with some sunken eyes sticky oral mucosa and um, decreased tears and all that can be because of um, moderate dehydration and if the child is severely dehydrated the child can be lethargic, drowsy, uh, peripheries might be cold and the eyes will be very sunken, oral mucosa will be dry and there will not be any tears also. And such children will be so drowsy uh, that the child will not be able to um, uh, take any oral feeds given. But in moderate dehydration, child will be thirsty and if, if water is given, child might drink. But in severe dehydration, child will not be able to drink. So, uh, what all we can assess? So, we should first check the mental status of the child. If the child is alert, it can be because, uh, because child is normal. In uh, uh, moderate dehydration, child will be irritable. And in severe dehydration, child will be lethargic. And thus, uh, in a um, normal child, that in mild dehydration, uh, child will not be much thirsty. Uh, there will be, child will be eager to drink if there is moderate dehydration. And severe dehydration, child will not, uh, child will be very lethargic. And heart rate, blood pressure, uh, breathing pattern and everything will be normal in a mild and moderate dehydration child. And uh, depending on the patients, whether it is, the child is having shock or not, there can be tachycardia, uh, reduced blood pressure, uh, thready pulse and uh, deep respiration if um, the child is having severe dehydration. Eyes we have already mentioned and uh, tears also we have already mentioned depending on the severity of dehydration uh, it will be very dry. Mucous membranes, the eyes and tears everything will be dry and we will check the anterior fontanelle in a child less than one, one and a half years. So anterior fontanelle uh, will be normal in minimal dehydration, uh, will be sunken in moderate dehydration and will be sunken in severe dehydration. Then we will be checking the skin turgor in the abdomen. We will be uh, pinching the skin for at least 3 seconds and we will be checking the recoil. So recoil will be normal in mild dehydration and in uh, some dehydration or moderate dehydration there will be uh, recoiling uh, within 2 seconds and in severe dehydration it will recoil only after 2 seconds. And capillary refill timing also, uh, it will be prolonged in severe de um, dehydration. And extremities will be usually cold and mottled in severe dehydration. And urine output also will be reduced according to the um, severity of dehydration. So urine output is one of the important indicator which can tell how dehydrated the patient is. So uh, if we can divide it as mild, moderate to severe dehydration or the child will be having uh, no dehydration, some dehydration or severe dehydration. Both are same only. So um, if there is mild dehydration or no dehydration, that means the child is deficient in less than 50 ml per kg of body fluid because of the acute diarrheal disease. And in some dehydration, there will be a loss of at least 50 to 100 ml per kg of body fluid. And in severe dehydration, there will be loss of more than 100 ml per kg. So, and child might be also having features of malnutrition, cough, fever, tachypnea and all. So, um, in the ER, what all are the investigations should be done? Actually, in a, if a child presents with diarrheal disease, the only treatment is correction of the dehydration. We don't have, want to uh, investigate the child, unnecessarily prick the child and all. Uh, but in some conditions, we will be checking the uh, some of the lab parameters. Uh, GRBS will be checked if the child is appearing drowsy. We have to rule out hypoglycemia because the child might not be taking much oral feeds. Uh, then uh, we will be checking the counts and CRP in sick looking children and if it is associated with fever. Then we will be checking the electrolytes uh, uh, for any electrolyte deficiencies or hypokalemia. Then uh, the bun creat ratio will be elevated in severe dehydration because of the pre-renal failure. Uh, 
then uh, um, fecal lacto friends some tests are there these things are done only in case of dysentery or uh, the fine blood in stools then uh, routine stool cultures are not indicated uh, but uh, stool cultures are sent only if there are more than 20 stools a day or there is a, if there is a history of travel to an endemic area or uh, if there is history of fever uh, or blood in stools if the uh, patient is having severe abdominal tenderness and all and uh, radiological investigations also are having only very limited role and if we are suspecting a surgical abdomen only we will have to go for a radiological investigation to rule out any bowel obstruction foreign bodies perforations like that so um, investigation as such is not indicated uh, our role in acute diarrheal disease is to correct uh, dehydration so how to correct dehydration so um, um, usually we will be preferring oral rehydration and IV is only indicated if the child is lethargic that means in severe dehydration and if the child is having some immunocompromise um, sorry a hemodynamic compromise or altered mentation and child is not able to drink water so um, oral rehydration therapy we will be hydrating the patient uh, along with the sodium uh, glucose we should supplement so that the glucose dependent sodium pump in the intestine will be working so there should be a 1 is to 1 ratio for glucose and sodium so this can prevent uh, and treat dehydration uh, it can uh, replace the ongoing loss and it can meet the nutrition required for the child also so uh, we can either uh, prepare an OR solution uh, at home we can uh, get a water sachet and mix it with the water and give the child or in at home we can prepare or a solution uh, which can be prepared and kept and uh, in a bottle either we can uh, prepare in one liter bottle or uh, we can prepare in one glass uh, if we are preparing in one glass we will be adding one teaspoon of glucose with one pinch of salt and then we will be giving to the child or we can um, give it uh, prepare as one liter and if we are keeping it we should use it within 24 hours otherwise it will get contaminated or some other uh, things which can uh, supplement this um, ors is um, salt rice water salted yogurt drink uh, vegetable or chicken soup this these things will be containing glucose along with sodium so uh, this thing can also be used instead of ors but uh, coconut water unsweetened fresh juices and all will not be sufficient because sufficient amount of sodium and glucose will not be there either one will be deficient in each so uh, these are some of the uh, solutions which are used so uh, who uh, ors contains uh, both carbohydrates and sodium in equal amounts then uh, in the lower part of the table we will be seeing some uh, apple juice uh, colas and all these things will contain only carbohydrates and sodium are is very less so it shouldn't be used and if we are using um, chicken broth and all these will contain more of sodium and glucose content will be less so uh, we should select a uh, fluid which will contain uh, sodium and carbohydrate in equal amounts and uh, we will be discussing about uh, the plan A, B and C for dehydration. So in no dehydration or mild dehydration, we will be going for the plan A. So this child is having diarrhea, but this child is not having any signs of dehydration. Um, so that is called as plan A. So uh, in those patients, what we will be doing is we will be just giving um, OR solution. Uh, depending on the loose tools so if the child is having um, loose tools we will be giving 10 ml per kg uh, supplementary ors to uh, prevent the to prevent dehydration and if the child is having vomiting we will be giving 2 ml per kg or solution so uh, we all know that uh, uh, if in mild dehydration the uh, water which is lost is less than 50 ml per kg so we can supplement by giving ors with each loose tools so child will not be drinking that actively so uh, we, we can give uh, one teaspoon every one to two minutes um, so that the child will be sipping slowly 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 and if this child is um, a, a somewhat bigger child then we can ask the child to drink in glass 
of water and suppose if, if this child is vomiting we will have to wait for at least 10 minutes then after that we can again uh, feed the child with spoon and vomiting is not a contraindication for oral rehydration therapy so in plan b so uh, pl in plan b we will have to uh, in plan b we all know that the body is deficient in uh, 50 to 100 ml of uh, 100 ml per kg of fluid because plan b means it is it is a treatment for moderate dehydration so here 50 to 100 ml per kg of fluid is getting lost so we will have to supplement the daily requirements we will have to uh, uh, uh we will have to replace the deficiency of the child and we will have to give the maintenance fluid therapy also so uh, daily requirement for a child, uh, daily fluid requirement is up to 10 kg, it is 100 ml per kg, 10 to 20 kg, 50 ml per kg and more than 20 kg, 20 ml per kg. So that is a daily requirement and uh, in order to uh, replace the deficit, we will have to give our solution. 75 ml per kg over us we should give over 4 hours so the dehydration part that is a 50 to 100 ml per kg dehydration part should be corrected within 4 hours by giving orally or if the child is not feeding then we can give through our rice tube also and we will be repeating the same dose for the next 4 hours if the child is still persisting in some dehydration or moderate dehydration so uh, uh, that is the deficit replacement and for maintenance we will be giving uh, the OR solution depending on the loose tool. So um, for maintenance therapy we will be giving the treatment as plan A. That means in plan A we told with each loose tools we will be giving 10 ml per kg of uh, ORS and with each vomiting we will be giving 2 ml per kg of ORS. And we will be continuing the uh, breastfeeding and the regular feeds of the child. So we told we will be correcting the deficit within four hours, and uh, we uh, will be correcting the, uh, with additional or supplements with each loose tools and vomiting. Then uh, these feeding also we will be usually giving it in a teaspoon every one to two minutes. Or if the child is uh, lazy to drink, a maximum five minutes we will be waiting, and then we will be giving the feed. And we'll be moving on to the plan C. In plan C, uh, the child will be lethargic. That means it is a case of severe dehydration. Either the child will be in um, shock or the child will not be in shock. So first we will be discussing about the child in severe dehydration without signs of shock. So uh, here we will have to give the patient uh, with uh, crystalloids along with some dextrose. So we can, if a child is less than one year of age, we can give um, rigor lactate or normal saline with 5% uh, dextrose. So uh, in child less than one year, we will have, we know that in plan C or in um, severe dehydration, the body is, body has already lost more than 100 ml per kg of fluid. So in the first hour, we will have to replace 30 ml per kg and in the next 5 hours we will have to replace 70 ml per kg in a child less than 1 year and if the child is more than 1 year we will have to correct 30 ml per kg in half an hour and 70 ml per kg in next 2 and a half hours or if the uh, if we can give to a rails tube we can give 20 ml per kg per hour uh, for 6 hours. And then we will be reassessing the child every 15 to 30 minutes. And if the child is persisting in severe dehydration, we will have to repeat the IV fluids and IV infusion. Or if this patient is improving to uh, some dehydration, then we can move to the plan B. And if the child is not having any dehydration anymore, then we can move to plan A. Plan A means uh, supplementing the ORS depending on the loose tools and moment. So, suppose this patient in severe dehydration come presents to us with a shock. So, in shock, we cannot wait for a fluid to get over uh, within one hour. So, we will have to bolus the fluid. So, IV rehydration with crystalloid should be done uh, in 20 ml per kg dose. That should be bolus over 5 minutes. And uh, if this patient, after that bolus dose, if this patient is, his child is still in shock, we can give up to three boluses. So maximum 60 ml per kg can be given to the child.
and if this patient is improving and if this patient is in severe dehydration without any shock then we can give the correction uh, as listed in the previous table that means we can correct 20 ml per kg over one hour or 30 minutes um, um, depending on the dehydration uh, we will uh, sorry depending on the age of the child we will be able to correct that within uh, whatever time period it is and uh, uh, initial IV boluses when we are giving we will be only giving crystalloids and if we are giving maintenance fluid we will be giving some dextrose containing fluid and if the child is having some electrolyte disturbances or hypokalemia then we will have to give uh, correct the potassium also and with each ongoing loss uh, of that means diarrhea or vomiting we will have to correct that also and in neonates the yes i just i'm just um, telling the fl uh, fluid of choice uh, we can give 10 percent dextrose with no electrolytes uh, it, it is a maintenance fluid okay and uh, in case of uh, children uh, less than seven days of age we can give a maintenance fluid of dextrose five percentage with um, half normal saline and if the child is more than one week we can give five percent dextrose with uh, uh, normal saline but this is maintenance fluid but if we want to correct the shock and if you want to give bolus dose we will be giving crystalloids only uh, for maintenance only we will be adding dextrose containing fluids and uh, one thing we should remember is we should not stop feeding the child even though we are correcting dehydration that that is not sufficient for the child we should continue breastfeeding uh, so that the child will get uh, enough nutrition support and uh, that will avoid the decreased supply from the mother's side so mother's breast if the child is not feeding then the mother's breast milk will naturally start decreasing so the child should be continued on breast milk and continued feeding will slow the progression of dehydration and uh, it will increase a nutritional supplement to the bowel lumen also and the mucosa will recover fast so uh, and never stop feeding the child give adequate diet to the child which the child was taking before so uh, in the maintenance space uh, we should um, anyway replace the ongoing loss along with that we'll have to uh, maintain the uh, patient's uh, fluid requirement. So, uh, uh, if this patient is having some allergy to lactose and all, we can uh, stop giving lactose containing fluids. But if the child is not having any uh, problem like that, we can still give the child milk and all. That is not a contraindication in case of diarrhea. And uh, even the, we can give fat containing food also. That is also not a contraindication in acute diarrheal disease because fat is, is an important source of calories and uh, also uh, we shouldn't stop fat uh, just because the child is having diarrheal disease. And uh, some food items like uh, toast and all will will not be having much amount of um, nutrition so it is not recommended and unsalted yogurt and all will not be containing much uh, nutrition to the child so uh, that all should be avoided and avoid beverages high sugar containing beverages should be avoided so uh, this is the maintenance fluid uh, as per the holiday cigar formula so once this child as in um, shock we told that uh, we should give bolus of 20 ml per kg and if this child is rem uh, continuing in uh, shock we will give again boluses to maximum 60 ml per kg bolus we will be giving and to maintain this child's uh, rehydration we will be giving maintenance solution according to holiday cigar formula uh, so if we have a child who is uh, who is uh, 30 kg for the first 10 kg we will be giving 4 ml per kg per hour uh, so that is 100 ml per kg uh, sorry uh, if this child is uh, if we have a child who is 30 kg for the first 10 kg we will be giving 4 ml per kg per hour and for the next 10 kg we will be giving 2 ml per kg and for the extra kgs more than 20 kgs we will be giving 1 ml per kg so if we have a 30 kg child we will have for the first 10 kg uh, 4 ml per kg so 40 ml next 10 kg 2 ml per kg so 20 ml and next 10 kg uh, 
1 ml per kg. So, 10. So, total it will be 40 plus 20 plus 10. So, that much ml per kg per hour infusion will be started as a maintenance fluid. So, in maintenance fluid, it uh, need not be crystallized as, uh, as such. We can give dextrose containing fluid also. And antiemetics. Usually, um, vomiting is not a contraindication for oral rehydration therapy that I have already told. And if at all this vomiting is continuing, uh, we can give ondansetron at a dose of 0.15 milligram per kilogram per dose can be given orally. And we are not supposed to use any agents like methoclopramide, promethacin, plocorpercin and all because that can cause respiratory depressions and extra pyramidal reactions. So that should be avoided. And uh, moving on to the anti-diarrheal medications. Uh, anti-diarrheal medications are contraindicated in children because of the lack of safety for children. And agents like loperamide and all are absolutely contraindicated because uh, that can cause paralytic ileus, toxic megacolon and all. And in case of uh, E. coli infections and all, loperamide can result in hemorrhagic um, uremic syndrome. So, uh, this child might be having renal, uh, might develop renal failure, thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia and also hemolytic uremic syndrome will happen in if we are giving loperamide in a child who is having E. coli infection. Um, absorbents and anti-secretory agents like resicodotril, uh, bismuth and all uh, should not be given in children. Uh, so these things are contraindicated. Even probiotics which we usually give for adults uh, for diarrheal disease are not used in children uh, and it is not being studied ex extensively in children. So it is also not recommended. And the only recommended thing for acute diarrheal disease in children is zinc. Zinc will help in intestinal mucosal healing for children. So we can supplement with zinc in children uh, and the doses are 20 ml per kg per day orally should be given for at least 10 to 14, k, uh, 14 days for a child less more than 6 months and if a child is less than 6 months we should give 10 mg per day that is a dose and this will help in faster intestinal healing. So, um, acute diarrheal disease, the main treatment is um, rehydrating the child, then sink, then uh, we can give antiemetics only if the child is having recurrent vomiting. Antibiotics are not actually indicated in um, uh, this condition, acute diarrheal disease and uh, antibiotics are usually indicated if this child is having bloody diarrhea, presence of fever, if the child is very toxic, if the child is having some immune deficiency, um, if this patient has been exposed to cholera, if this patient is having sickle cell disease or some inflammatory bowel diseases. And usually the uh, indicated antibiotics are um, ambicillin or uh, trimethoprim uh, sulfamethoxazole combination that is a first line agent uh, in patients uh, who is having um, E. coli infections and all and uh, if this child is having uh, some traveler's diarrhea and all uh, we can use acetromycin also. Uh, these the, uh, antibiotics are usually given orally and uh, ceftriaxone like IV antibiotics are given if the child is getting admitted. Um, ideally antibiotics are not advised uh, that itself can cause many side effects also but if required and if the child is very sick only we will be giving some antibiotics. So and the antibiotics are usually used are ambicillin, astromycin and uh, for trimoxazole that means a trimethoprin uh, self-methoxazole combination. And in uh, cholera we can use doxycycline, astromycin or uh, cotrimoxazole. And Ersinia also antibiotics I have mentioned but it is it shouldn't be um, if it is a proven case only, we will be giving antibiotics. Uh, classically, in acute diarrheal disease, we don't want antibiotics. And how to uh, discharge this patient from an ED? For a child presence to the ED with um, diarrhea, how to discharge this patient? So, uh, we should make sure that uh, the child is well rehydrated and the child uh, if you are planning for the discharge the child should not be dehydrated uh, the uh, child should be in a no dehydrated or a minimal dehydrated state the child's vital should be normal there should be adequate urine output and 
stool input output everything will be should be matching uh, at least the patient's input should be more than the output and the caregiver should be taught regarding the science of dehydration and how to give or solution and how to um, and should be educated how to uh, educated not to stop feeding the child to continue on breastfeed to uh, and advice regarding water food items to be given to the child they should be uh, they should be uh, educated how to identify whether uh, whether if the if at all the child is becoming drowsy if the child is having fever and all they should be educated to bring the child back so uh, if at all this child is a young child less than uh, in a young age infants and if the child is less than 1 year of age then we should ask them to follow up within the next 24 hours and uh, we should also advise them about the prevention of acute diarrheal disease that means the use of safe food and water uh, boil the uh, containers in which the food is given to the child proper hand washing and proper identification and the use of latrines should be advised and make sure that the child is immunized properly so this is all about acute diarrheal disease so the mainstay of treatment in acute diarrheal disease is identify the dehydration correct the dehydration and sink therapy um, if at all required only we will be giving antiemetics and uh, the probiotics and anti secretory agents these things are contraindicated even antibiotic as such is not needed um if it is a recurrent case of diarrhea the child should be evaluated for any anatomical abnormalities or irritable bowel disease so correct the rehydration and um, give the sufficient nutrition and maintenance fluid to the child and do not stop breastfeeding that is the key for acute diarrheal disease thank you